Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to be showing you how to drop your freaking cloak thing. But anyways, turn yourself into Mina from Zelda Twilight Princess. Zelda, this series, is my favorite video game series ever. My first face paint ever was a Zora, and you can find that on my other channel. I want to see one video. It's like years old. So this isn't totally accurate to Mina. Obviously her hair is different, and then um, the um, cloak, it's way different as well. But I'm not the best at creating things with, like, accessorizing it, like sewing things and creating in that way. I'm better at body painting. So basically I just bought this cloak from Dollar Tree and then I put some construction paper through it. I just cut it up and made it this way. So it's not totally accurate in that aspect, but still I think it looks pretty darn cool. And my favorite thing is my eyes. If you don't know, can't wear contacts. And so when I do looks like this, I have to paint my eyes on a lot. So I think they came out pretty cool this time. So I hope you guys enjoy the tutorial. Please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and comment down below what looks you guys want to see next. Anyways, with that being said, let the tutorial begin. Okay, so the first thing I started to paint was the skin color, so the base color for Midna's skin. I mixed together Mayron's teal and white paints together to create the skin color I needed. I didn't want to mix blue with it because I felt like if I mix blue, the skin might turn out too blue and I'd rather be lighter than darker because it's easier to shade and not look like a smurf uh, if I went lighter rather than darker. Looking at her in the video game, there's times where she looks like she's a bluish, grayish white to me, but uh, like I said, I'd rather go lighter than darker and that's why I didn't add any gray. Now I use a black paint to start painting on Mina's dress and I make sure with that black paint I just kind of outline the patterns that are on the cloak and then I fill in the dress with that paint. You want the dress to be black and the cloak's base color to be gray a dark gray color. The reason being is if you painted the cloak and the dress black, it's not going to look like two separate pieces of clothing. They're just going to look exactly the same. So you want to make the cloak lighter in color, first of all, because it really is a little bit lighter than the dress, but also because the cloak would be lying on top of the dress, which would create a shadow onto the dress. So you just want the dress to be darker and then you want the cloak to be a little bit lighter in color. All the products I used I will list down below. You're not going to see me painting too much on top of the cloak itself but it's pretty self-explanatory after you see me paint like kind of near the outlining that I did. Okay the next thing I did was paint the base color of the headpiece. The part that is dangling onto the forehead so it's not really a necklace it's more like a head necklace. I don't even know what those things are called. So to paint this on I used a mixture of white and gray paint. You definitely gotta reference a picture for this because it's way too hard to paint from the top of your head. I wanted to get all the base colors down first, so the base color for the headpiece. Somebody rang the doorbell. Anyways, the base color for like the cloak and the dress. And then afterward, I went back with the highlighting, shading, and more detailing. So the next base color I applied was a whitish gray color that I applied to the center of the designs that are on the cloak. To paint the gem, I used a red face paint. I don't know if it's exactly a gem or what type of stone it is. I, I don't have a clue. I just know that it's red. Then I go ahead and I outline the white part of the designs that are on the cloak. So I'm Minna's cloak and I mix together a color that is darker than Minna's skin and use that to outline it. So basically the teal and white paints I used before I mixed them together to create this color you see me using to paint right now. Time for the eyes. Now if you're going to cosplay this and you would um, are planning on wearing contacts, you do not have to paint the eyes on obviously and you might do this a little differently. But for those who want to paint it on, what you're going to do is you're going to take a black paint and you're going to use that to create a very oblong kind of like eye shape and wing with that black eyeliner. Like you want it to be very winged out and extended. Bring that paint into your crease and down towards your tear duct. So basically, the black paint is going to outline the entire eyeball. Once you've done that, you can start painting on the eyebrow. And the eyebrow goes in the exact same shape that the um, eye does. So it has that really extended wing. 
For the eyeshadow, I just used a purple paint for Mayron. I didn't mix any colors together to create this color. I just used it straight out of the pan and I used it to paint the eyeshadow. Or what I assume is eyeshadow. I don't know if that is like her eyelid color or if it is eyeshadow. But I'm gonna go with eyeshadow. Sorry that you hear me say Mina sometimes instead of Minna. I just, I don't know, I, I switch between, but back and like back and forth, but I know it's Minna. Anyways, after you've painted on the eyeshadow, you're gonna go back with your black paint and paint some lashes just on the lower lash line. Now for the actual eye, you want to paint what would be the whites of the eyes yellow, and then you paint the iris of the eye orange. You don't want to use a dark orange or a very, very vibrant orange. Just kind of use a dull orange to paint the iris of the eye. And then once you've done that, you use a red paint to kind of paint like where the pupil would be. Just kind of around it. We'll do more detailing here after. But just for now, you've got these three base colors for the eye. I love painting eyes on. And like having it come out successful it's one of my favorite things to do anyways for the lips you can mix together a purple color and fill in your lips with that paint if you have a lipstick or a lip liner that is the color that you need I suggest using that because face paint really dries out your lips and makes them really like crusty and dry so yeah just keep that in mind so that's the last base color that I had to paint on and now I could start detailing. The first thing I started to detail was the headpiece. So I mixed together a brown color that it had a little bit of a yellow tint to it and I used it to start detailing the headpiece by creating like these little V shapes that are wider than a V but they're still like a V shape and I paint that onto these pieces that are in the middle and this will help the pieces look a little bit more like they're popping out and also it's like some of the detailing that is actually on the headpiece. When you're painting a character that's already like been done, like it's a character that's been created, it's nice to have a picture on hand to reference. So it's nice to have a picture of Minna to reference the headpiece. You can paint it exactly as you see it. So with that brown paint, I start just painting on details like these little circle shapes that are on the top of the headpiece and then like this kind of square shape, not even a square, it's more like a triangle, um, a cute triangle that's like on this top of the headpiece you just gotta stare at a picture because if I explain everything it's kind of like really really hard to explain it and wouldn't make sense to you guys because you can't really see it you also want to use that brown paint to shade a little bit around the headpiece so where the circle area is on the top of the headpiece you want to shade inside of that and you bring that down onto the inner corner of some parts of the headpiece um it's again it's kind of hard to explain you just really gotta look at a picture and I'll link down below the picture I use as I said so you can see what I was referencing. And then after I've done that, I use an eyeshadow that's a little bit darker than the skin color to shade. You don't wanna use black eyeshadow cause it's gonna to be too harsh and it's gonna be hard to blend out. So if you want a color that's a little bit darker than the actual skin tone, you can mix a little bit of black eyeshadow into the eyeshadow that you're using to make it a little bit darker, but you don't wanna use just black eyeshadow. And you use that to shade around the headpiece to make it look more lifted. Sometimes you don't even have to hear me explain something, like you can watch me do it and that might be more helpful for you. Because some people I know, they um, learn something better by seeing it visually. Like me, I'm one of those people. Like you can tell me something, I won't get it, but if you show me um, and I can see it, I have an easier time getting it. Anyways, the next thing you're going to do is if you want to make some of the shadows more intense, you can use a black paint. So in the inner areas of the headpiece where like the pieces kind of loop together and there's like a hole where you can see um, Minna's skin you can add a little bit of black paint there and you can also add a little bit more black paint to outline the outer corners of the headpiece to help it really like be defined to define the gem I use black paint to create some like lines going through it to make it look more raised and then I mix together a light red color to highlight it and make some lines again to help it look more raised. I'm sorry you can't really see me doing it. I was using my right hand to paint and then it was just like covering up the gem. True story, I'm ambidextrous. I write with my left hand but I paint with my right and I cannot for the life of me paint with my left. I have such a hard time painting with my left hand and it kind of annoys me because I write so much more with my left hand. Anywho, in the crease, you're gonna start defining that using a dark purple eyeshadow. So it makes the eyelid area where the eyeshadow is look a little bit more realistic. You can use different tones of purple if you want to, or you can just use one purple eyeshadow. It's all up to you. 
Now you want to contour your cheekbones and around your face using a color that is similar to the one you used to shade below the headpiece and maybe a little bit darker. I had to mix a little bit of black eyeshadow in with that color to create the color I needed to contour. And yeah, you just use that to contour right below your cheekbones and your jawline to really help slim out your face. You don't have to use one as dark as I did, but I really like a really chiseled cheek. Contouring the face with this eyeshadow adds a lot of dimension to your face. It creates shadows, which a person naturally has. And when you apply that blue paint, it takes away lots of the shadows. So you want to mimic a shadow, you know, humans normally have using this eyeshadow for Midna's skin. To shade the dress and cloak, you can use a black eyeshadow. It's okay to use a black eyeshadow over here because unlike the face, it's okay to be a little bit more harsh in that area. Um, on the face, you want it to be softer, and especially if you accidentally make a mistake with the black eyeshadow on the face, it's just going to look terrible. So that's why you don't really want to use the black eyeshadow over there. So you just shade right under the dress to help it look more lifted and under the cloak to make it look more lifted and where the cloak and dress meet. Because eyeshadow tends to be more pigmented than face paint, it'll show when you shade in that area where the dress and the cloak is. Also shade around the designs that are on the cloak. In the um, video game where the designs are, there's more of a glow there, but you can't really mimic the glow with face paint. That's pretty much impossible. So I rather shade and make the cloak look a little bit more realistic and like kind of dirtied up. You wanna highlight the cloak and the dress. So to highlight the cloak, I mix together just a light gray color, not too light, so more like a medium gray color. And I just apply that to the shoulders of the cloak and then kind of around the designs that are there. And then a little bit on the inner corner of the dress and where the cloak and dress meet, just so you can see a distinction between those two sets of clothing. Now the sleeves of the dress, it's kind of like the same thing with the dress itself and the cloak. Basically you use your black paint to paint the base color of the sleeves of the dress and then you make sure you kind of bring it up toward the hand because the way her sleeve is it kind of goes into a triangle shape on top of the hand and then once you've done that you use your um, aqua kind of color to just paint some designs on. She has like a certain design on those sleeves but it's kind of hard for me to tell and it was like it was really hard to tell exactly what they were and it just got like hard staring at a picture and then try to mimic that especially in the angle that she was in it wasn't the same angle I'm in so I just ended up painting some designs that were similar to what she had on the sleeves reaching the final stretch here guys this is one of the longest tutorials I've done in a very long time probably like six years but anyways what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a white face paint and you're gonna apply just a little circle to each eye and then a few lines on top of where the iris would be so that this will help the eyes stand out a little bit more and just not look so flat and then this is just a tip if you're doing exactly what I did you might want to take the color you used to um, paint Midna skin and apply that to your hairline and then when you apply your wig, lots of times if you bought a cheap wig like I did, the um, base of the wig, I don't know what it's called, where all the hairs are sewn into it, it's like totally different from the wig color itself. And then sometimes it really shows because the wig might not be as full. So what I do is I just use my face paint, so a color similar to the wig color, and I just go right over the wig cap and just kind of cover it. So that's just... Um, Maybe that might be a helpful tip for some of you guys who end up buying like cheap wigs like I do. So that's it for the tutorial. Please give it a thumbs up if you like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel and leave a comment down below letting me know what you want to see. I don't know what you want to see so if you leave a comment that's going to help give me some ideas and if somebody comments something you want to see make sure you give them a thumbs up because this will help guide me in the right direction. With that being said I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.